Hey Chicago, what do you say? This is the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app and use code CHGO when you sign up. Corey Friedman, Ryan Herrera, Cody Stuckmeyer. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Look, Delmendo. How'd I do? Grade me again. Here we go. Uh, that was good. Solid B plus. Was it better than last time? That was time? good. It was better than last time. Oh yes, we're improving. You're you're really morphing into your job is, Luke. is it's in jeopardy, Luke. It's in it's in jeopardy, Luke. Um, practice makes perfect. Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone, Luke. Uh, everyone say in the chat should uh, tell Luke to feel better. He is not feeling well. That is why I'm I'm being uh, Cody Stuckmeyer today. Feel um, better, Luke. Love you, Luke. Yeah, but you know Luke's out. But but Corey Corey's here at Corey underscore Cubs. Shout That's out me. to you. Back from L.A. Back from L.A. Um, and uh, Ryan, obviously. Of course. Right here. Ryan Always. underscore A underscore Herrera. And I am Cody underscore CHGO. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, there's a lot of baseball news, uh, which is great because, you know, October was just a brutal, brutal time for me. And I'm, I'm happy to have things to talk about. Mm. So uh, should we start with, uh, you know, the thing everyone's kind of talking about with uh, Saya and uh, – Kodai Kodai Senga. Senga. Sure. Yes, that is. Uh, we can start out with that. That was um, fun to read. Fun to read about. Also, kind of like expected it a little bit. Yeah. Knowing that Seiya, obviously from Japan, mm-hmm. um, has talked to other players about how much they like being on the Cubs and being in Chicago, um, and I didn't surprise me too much that he would obviously try to get another Japanese player. Um, coming over to America to to be interested in the Cubs, um, but yeah, no, um, yeah, that wasn't surprising. But because uh, that came out of um, Gordon Whitmire, NBC Sports Chicago. Oh yeah, um, his, shout out to Gordon. Yeah, his uh, his article caught up with uh, an a- the agent that I guess represents them both, mm-hmm. uh, Joel Wolf, um, and yeah, basically was saying that Say has been uh, part of a little the recruiting party a little bit for for Kodai Singa, and um, we've heard the name. We've heard him connected to the Cubs kind of all off season, or at least the last couple of months, as far as like when the Cubs go in and and target their pitching, uh, you know, free agents and stuff like that, who they might go get. Uh, and we know Sango's been a part of that. Uh, but yeah, no, is is clearly a good thing that <laughs> Seiya Suzuki is is out here recruiting another um, Japanese player that has you know good upside and and there's good things about talked yeah. about him. And this one feels like I mean you never know. How this stuff goes, especially mm-hmm. when the, the guy who's going to have to move over to a different country and everything. But this feels like he's going to be a cup. Like, I feel like we're talking about him a lot because there's a lot of smoke here. Mm-hmm. It makes all the sense in the world for the Cubs. And I, I like the move if they can do it quickly, which it seems like maybe it's a process that gets wrapped up quickly just with the way it's being talked about. It, that, that sets a really nice kind of pace for Jed Hoyer. Mm-hmm. You improve the rotation. You raise that floor a little bit, and then if you still want to go after someone like Verlander or Degrom or pursue a trade, mm-hmm. you know Pablo Lopez is coming up. We'll talk about that in a bit. You can still do that, but you've already at least made the rotation better. Right. And it's you know also like it's it's always good that the Cubs seem to be thought of and talked of favorably mm-hmm. in these conversations, right? Like obviously, say I chose to come to the Cubs. Mark Stroman mm-hmm. chose to come to the Cubs. Uh, the discussion with Sanga also kind of centers around like good things about the Cubs. Like we want it to be that way, right? Like rather than say a saying, eh, you well, know, well, you want it to be a so free great. agent destination, for right? Sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, you know, you kind of hit it on the the head for me, Corey. With you know, I said yesterday is like the Cubs need to come out and set the tone, like not just in game, but in the off season as well. Like set the tone of the off season and and uh, and help the fan help the fan base. Um, you know, feel confident that they're actually going to make significant changes to the roster, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone kind of, at least the talking heads, not just us talking heads, but other talking heads, believe that Sanga's more of a, you know, middle of the rotation yeah, type guy. guy, number three, right? maybe. And, you know, that's that's one need the Cubs have. Because you got Stro, you, you got Justin Steele coming off a great season. You know, Kyle Hendricks is going to come back, but you don't know what you're going to get, but you know he's going to be in that rotation just based off the experience and the respect that he has gained from the organization mm-hmm. and the fans and all that. Um, Drew Smiley possibly, but either way, like, Sanga kind of 
would be inserted right there in the middle of the rotation. You still need a number one guy, but he yep. like if you if they make a make a move to get him, you know, within the next couple of weeks or whatever tomorrow. I don't. I don't they can't do it tomorrow. Right? No, but no. Friday, whatever. <laughs> um, it would be a big way to set the tone to at least give the fan base some optimism and uh, and believe that they're going to make some serious changes. So, uh, yeah, I, I love to see that say, uh, that Saya is out there, uh, you know, trying to, you know, do things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, convince guys. I, I do think that the Cubs having that, you know, that insert into, you know, guys from Japan, uh, having – Having that as, as an asset, I think, you know, we've talked about when Saya came over, like, you know, his whole adjustment to living in America and, like, moving all the way yeah. so far away. I think, I think that does play a role for Senga in terms of, well, at least when he comes here, at least he'll know one guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that, that was the thing is, like, you have so many Latin American players, on the Cubs especially, so, like, guys coming over, guys coming up. Like, they've all kind of been through that same mm-hmm. process. That's why – like Christopher Morrell and Nelson Velasquez were so drawn to Wilson Contreras because he'd been through the same things that they had been through growing up um, and, and getting into baseball. Um, whereas when Seiya came over, there was, I mean, there were no other Japanese players on the Cubs. Um, you had, you know, you Darvish was in San Diego at that point. Um, you know, Shohei Otani's in LA. There, there are Japanese players, but there was no one on the Cubs that went through what Seiya was going through mm-hmm. um, when he first came over to, to Chicago. Um, and that, that, Obviously, then did not aid in his adjusting to American life. Like he had, uh, I'm not gonna say he had to do it on his own because the Cubs do have people that can help. I know, like now Masamoto is is one of those people um, that would help say uh, acclimate to American culture. But he didn't have like someone specifically in his position to help mm-hmm. him do that. Uh, but he's done that, and now is saying uh, start he comes over and looks at the Cubs. Say uh, ha- is someone that. Is literally would have been in his shoes the year prior, learning what learning about Chicago, learning about the Cubs, learning about America in general, and how to acclimate, and can actually give him that firsthand advice of, hey, like if you want to be a Cub, this is what I did, this is how you know I got myself acclimated here, I got myself ready to go and play baseball here, um, and, and different things in that in that direction, and I so I think that is is a is a good recruiting tool. For a guy like Kodai Senga, because he has someone on the Cubs that already went through it, what he's going to be going through the next yeah. year. Yeah, uh, I like Mike Dubs comment. He says, give me the Samurai Cubs. Bring Senga <laughs> to the Cubs. I like that. Um, Steven also in the chat says, as a Japanese-American, I've been following the latest news, and even Japanese media is reporting the Cubs are among the front runners for mm-hmm. Kodai Senga, which we've talked about that before. I know the Red Sox are also in, uh, in play for that, and they've they've gone and got Japanese pitchers before. Um, in the past, so I, that wouldn't surprise me as as well. And I and the Red Sox, I think, need some pitching. So, um, I, I I do think though having Suzuki is a is a uh, you know a bonus or a plus for the Cubs in terms of if it comes down yeah. to the to them and the Red Sox, um, you know, and and also the Red Sox, like they have their own issues with trying to pay some of their own players right now. I, I would say that Senga isn't at the top of their list of priorities. Uh, so. I think that depends on how long Sanga mm-hmm. wants to wait this out and just get it done and over with, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, so it, it'll be interesting to, to follow along here over the next few days because, um, again, I, it's to me it's very important that the Cubs get out high here and, 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 and make a move. It doesn't have to yeah. be the Correa yet. It can just be something, something that, like I said, gives us some optimism. Well, I and like it. I think, you know, it it doesn't have to be Senga, but, you know, we will talk about, you know, potential trades, but even, you know, obviously we've talked about like Davis and Canario and how those injuries affect Jed's ability maybe to make trades or their willingness to make trades if the system is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in flux, I guess, at the moment. Um, and even if you look at someone like Pablo Lopez, who we'll talk about, or anybody else that might be available, sometimes trades fall through, right? Like, or you don't get the right offer or a team asks for too much. Like I think the thing with Senga or anybody that the Cubs are able to sign kind of quickly that gives them a long-term player in this rotation, it, it just, it, it helps remove some of those variables, Mm -hmm. right? If you want to go after Verlander to Grom, fine. Those guys are 
older, they've got injury things, they might cost a ton of money. You know, you never know how that might work out, even on a short-term deal. If Jed can address the rotation quickly, like I said, raise that floor a little mm-hmm. bit, it just gives you a little bit of, like, breathing room for the uncertainty of the rest of the offseason, right? Yeah, if, if everything goes Jed's way, great, right? Mm-hmm. Then maybe his best laid plan involves Senga and DeGrom and it, <laughs> making a trade, whatever, right? Yeah. But sometimes that's tough to execute. Like, if you can get one thing done... Set the pace, like you said, Cody. I think that puts the Cubs in a, a good right. position here. Yeah, that, Steven in the chat also mentions, keep in mind both Sanga and Suzuki will play in the World Baseball Classic for the Japanese national team and will miss time during spring training. That probably plays a factor in some way. I don't know how you know the front office views that. If that That's probably not like a, 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 a deal killer in any sense of the term. But also, I mean, Seiya had missed basically 100 days of his own offseason last year because of um, the the lockout and and wasn't able to come to America and get acclimated that way. So I think you'd trade most of an offseason for, for Kodai Senga um, to miss a couple weeks in spring training. I think you'd, you'd make that trade if you're really interested in getting Absolutely. Uh, him on your team. Um, resident buzzkill guy, uh, Michael Collada, shout out to you, man. Uh, he says, watching MLB Network, they never mention Cubs being heavily involved in anyone. They must know Ricketts <laughs> well, Michael. When I don't Mike, know if that's true. That's not true yeah. over the last 24 hours because John Morosi was on MLB Network yesterday, and he, of course, mentioned Carlos Correa and the Cubs. He said we're uh, going to be talking about that a lot. Kevin, do you have? I sent the the, the quote in, in Slack. Do you have that uh, as a graphic, or I can just read it? The um, which the, tweet was the Morosi, the John Morosi. It, was, it well, wasn't I, a tweet. It was quote. It was and just I a think quote. that uh, you know Michael Collada probably knows that the Cubs installed new energy efficient yeah. lights yesterday at Wrigley Field. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how much th- that probably cost a lot of money, but how much are they saving yeah. with those energy efficient lights? Mm-hmm. The it's Ricketts right are going to have to also, get their go money. Go ahead and read the, it. I have okay. the Wilson tweet. I was going to say, looking at that real quick, you're good. That that terrifies me. Getting flown in on a helicopter. To go on to that little thing and, yeah. and put up, ah, I, I don't like heights. And so that, just thinking about that terrifies the hell out well, of I th- me. I thought I heard that they were going to move the press box up onto oh the roof. Yeah. You're, not, you're not down for that? See, oh, no. Seeing the helicopter and all that, yeah. It, it was, uh, we watched that video yesterday that Luke made us endure, like, just anything with heights I just can't do. Anyway, <laughs> can't do uh, I have the quote here barely do the from, giant drop from John Morosi. Uh, And he said yesterday on MLB Network, Correa's overall market value is back to being roughly where it was a year ago. And I look at a team like the Cubs. They've always been linked to him in the past a lot. I think the Cubs and Correa will be one of those pairs we'll probably talk about for weeks to come. Listen, we can sit here and and, and I can, you know, get excited. And I can, that's one thing I can do. I can get excited about that quote. And I can also, you know, remain calm, all right? I'm choosing to get excited about it, all right? Me too. Especially coming from a guy like John Morosi, who's very respected in the industry. Uh, so, again, I don't think it's going to I, – I think these, these free agent shortstops are going to take a while. I don't think we're going to be wondering who's going where in January or February, but I do think that this is a play out through the month of November and December type situation – uh, the first one off the board will set the market, and yeah. we'll go from there. But I just – it's nice to hear that, that that's a thing still. <laughs> I have said since we were kind of gearing up for this offseason, I think he's the guy. Uh, how I rank all those guys and my preferences, I waver every day, but I just think Correa's the guy. Um, it's going to be interesting because it, it there's clearly interest on both parties. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be a little bit of a test, I think, of Jed's either savvy or willingness to bend, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's either – Correa did not get the deal he wanted last year. He wants a long-term deal. That's why he's opting out. He could have made a lot of money for one more year with the Twins. He wants the long-term deal. Jed doesn't like those. We know that, right? Right. Even though Correa's, yeah, even though Correa's on the younger side of this group and like relative to a lot of Mm -hmm. when guys hit free agency, this is going to be a test of is Jed willing to get the player and give him the deal he has to give him to get the player, or 
can he convince Correa to take something creative that raises the, you know, the AAV through the roof for five years or something, maybe has some escalators or options, whatever, Mm -hmm. and is Correa interested in that at all? But as we do, I talked a lot, I think, in last year's offseason, I get the aversion to the long-term deal, right? Mm -hmm, I, I don't even really have a problem with it. But sometimes... If you want the player, you have to give them the contract that they want or somebody else or Carlos Correa goes to Minnesota, right? Yeah, like, right. that's just how it is. So I think that's going to be true of any of these shortstops. You're probably going to have to be a little uncomfortable with what you end up giving them. But if you want power, you want a shortstop, you want this kind of elite talent. It's someone who plays shortstop you defensively gotta make the move. very well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know I've been – saying like if I were the Cubs top of my wish list would be Correa and I get why other people want Turner or, or Bogarts or even Danzy Swanson I get all that um and at this point it's kind of like you don't really have a true clue of which one the Cubs prefer mm-hmm. I think we're kind of basing it on our own our own preferences of who the Cubs should be after but it, mm-hmm. wherever the Cubs are at right now probably isn't as clear as, as we'd like it to be um I was just thinking about this. Honestly, I was thinking about this in the elevator coming up to the office earlier. Just like a, a deal like what Correa is getting would probably remind me of of a Jason Hayward type deal where you got a guy 27, 28 years old, should be entering his prime. Um, and, I mean, from what I've seen, it could be around eight years for Correa, which is what Hayward got. And, yes, you're paying him for past production, which is not the you know my favorite thing to do. But you're also paying him because he's younger. He's not 32, yeah. 33. Like he's younger. He has he's also he has had, prime years left. And Correa also has had really good consecutive seasons through like his oh, tenure yes. with the well, Astros. So what, Hayward, what, 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 what I was saying was that had Hayward, so Hayward had the eight year contract. He was going to get released. So it was technically seven. Had Hayward had four All Star level seasons and then kind of tapered off, and by the end of it was bad. Probably be less pissed about it, right? right? As Cubs fans, we probably would be le- less pissed about it um, because he gave you four. He lived up to the to the deal for at least four seasons, right? Right. I, I feel like the same thing goes with Correa. Say you give him an eight year contract, and you know the back half of it isn't as good as you want, but those first four seasons, even maybe even five, are like really really good, all star level, like l- like leading the charge of the playoff type seasons. But then the back three aren't as good, and he's still getting paid a lot of money. Are you, is that really going to – like, he would have lived up to the, con, the contract at that point. He would have, at that point, earned more than he what he actually made early on that he's probably – even though if he's making more than he's worth later on in the contract, it, it evens out. And yeah. so I think if, if that's the type of contract that you're looking at for Correa, as long as he's giving you a good – for really good first half of that contract, yeah, the, the back half it might sting to – eat money when he's maybe, you know, going, he's, he's tapering off in his, the back end of his career. Maybe not. I'm just kind of saying that just based sure. on, yeah. you know, how veterans work. But I, th- I think you do that contract just because he's younger, has had a lot of success, and if his prime years are right in the, the middle of what you hope would be a contention window. Yeah. And I think you're, then, then you you're discussing kind of what Jed's, trepidation is with long these contracts. long-term yeah. deals and I I'm with you like it, you would be paying you know it, it's like people talked about this when John Lester signed right like you signed him to a particular deal and he ended up being quite good for mm-hmm. pretty much the entirety of it it was really like that maybe like the last bit in 2020 that he struggled uh in a few of those COVID season starts but uh don't let me start on how valuable John Lester was. But, like, the, the the point being, though, like, even though he was good past that, you brought in John Lester to win the World Series and for the beginning of that contract, and you didn't really care after that. He ended up being good, but you brought him in to win. You did. Cool. The contract's worth it. Over. Done with. Yeah. Doesn't matter what happens in 2017 or 2018. Doesn't matter. He mm-hmm. did exactly what you brought him in to do, and I think that would be the same with someone like Correa. Absolutely. He has a long track record of being a very, very good hitter. Yes. Even if his offense tapers off as he gets older, you can probably move him to third base, I would guess. He's a good defender. He's a good athlete. 
he should not be like that. You know, he's not going to be like a black hole. Yeah. Well, even if he's thirty four or thirty five, right? Is the, the body type and the ability that he right. has would translate well to being an older third. Like when right. he goes to third base, older and or later on in his career, like it, mm-hmm. it should translate and not become a black hole, as you said. We've seen some comments, or I'm seeing some comments about. Sorry, you know, I ruined ev- your day, Michael. Everyone, <laughs> there's there's people there's there's the Trey Turner stands, and I, you know I get it, Trey Turner. I've seen that. That viral picture of him in the in the Wrigleyville jersey, like he does look good. It, he does hey, look he like does. he does look like my favorite player of the future. Uh, when I see that picture, um, I will say I was reading a, a, a John Heyman written article uh, where he like predicted um, where free agents would go. He had no insight to it; it's just his prediction. And he, and he he basically said about Trey Turner that the Cubs are a, a place that he thinks would would play. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there, we we haven't got a quote from like John Morosi or, or Rosenthal saying that Trey Turner is the guy, but I do think that the Cubs value Trey Turner as well, just yeah. as much as they do Carlos Correa. Again, we're in the first week of the off se- off season. I think that there's gonna we're gonna hear more rumors. We're gonna hear that we're all gonna overreact to and 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 and, and all of that. But I said it yesterday. I don't care who it is. Just give me someone. But <laughs> I would I would gladly take Correa over all of them just based off the youth. Um, and defensive versatility, uh, and you know, again, I said it yesterday as well. We can a lot of people don't like the guy because he was on the cheating Astros or whatever. But the guy stuck up for all his teammates during that. And if you're an Astros fan at that time, you love that because he he took a lot of heat. He took probably the most heat of anyone from that team, and he ate it. And he ate it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? He still went out there and performed. Uh, so, to me, that that's someone that's built different, and uh, I. I will gladly take someone like that on my team. It's so. also a good a good point from Joe in the chat, uh, just kind of about the structuring of the contracts. Like, the Cubs probably did want Jason Hayward to yeah. play well enough that he opted out, and that didn't... And you were kind of getting to that. Like, yeah. if he had played well enough in the beginning, like, That's either he opts out or you don't care if he's just a defensive yeah. guy later and in the thing. And then we're yelling about if the Cubs should have kept him or not. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Like, exactly. It, and it's, it, it's, it's... It just was what it was. You know, Correa's track record as a hitter is not comparable to Hayward's mm-hmm. and you know we're not comparing them it's just that's the most recent example of a big contract and kind of the why of this is why the Cubs seem kind of scared to do this no, again yeah. and 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 what the potential downside is mm-hmm. but yeah you, um, you got to spend money to to make money and to win and to your point I I've said this before. I do not. If the Cubs are the bad guys, <laughs> they get Carlos Correa and he's talking trash. I don't care. I don't, I don't want care. them to cheat. Yeah. We will. We will all. If they win and cheat, though, I, do again, I care? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I don't care. We will all right? stand him the moment someone talks trash to him or about the team and he says something to, you know, defend his guys. Yes. Like, that's just how fans work. That's how I when will. When he says something to Ryan in the clubhouse. <laughs> that just gets us all going. We're yes. going to be the biggest Carlos yeah. Correa fans there are. Absolutely. No, um, yeah. He, um, so, I, I don't know. You were just talking about it, Corey, and uh, as far as, like, the trepidation with contracts. This was Jed's exact quote from uh, his end-of-season press conference about a month ago now. Um, this, he was asked about intelligence spending, but it, he said to me, intelligence spending involves making decisions that make sense for the 2023 season, but also aren't, aren't going to hinder what we're trying to build. The nature of baseball contracts is challenging that way because we've all seen contracts of certain lengths that can really bog a team down. It's easy to talk about the player you're acquiring, but if that contract ends up hindering the ultimate goal here, which is to build something special and sustainable and lasting, then it wasn't a good transaction. I so, it. I mean, clearly like one of those contracts that bogged the team down was Jason Hayward's contract. Mm-hmm. Um, be- that's also because he didn't live up to it in any of the first few years oh, right. um, that he had. Like his he had best one of his season worst was probably year. 2020. Yeah, he had his one of the worst years of his career the year the Cubs won the World Series. Yeah. And if the Cubs didn't win the World Series that year, we all there would have been so much more pressure on Hayward to even yes. do anything. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Um, I see like 77 people in the chat right now. Uh, shout out to you, but I think we only have like 13 likes. Yeah, so 15 hit, likes. Huh? 15 we likes. More. We like that. I don't like that ratio. Uh, we we need more likes, so hit that like button for I us. I expect a better like number when I'm in the studio. Absolutely. You know, Anytime on, Corey's folks. here, we should have at least 100 likes by the end of the oh, show. Oh, yeah. 100. 
<laughs> Not that uh, many people like me, I'm sure. We're, we're talking <laughs> about, we're talking about money and all of that. I saw another tweet from Morosi saying that the Tigers are interested in uh or could be interested in a guy like Wilson Contreras. Um, we've well, talked Bears fan man like asked what the Cubs plans are at catcher as well. Yes. Um, so that kind of goes yeah. in with that. He uh, he sent multiple tweets related to catcher. Um, Morosi did. He said the the one that's up on the screen right now. Tigers are looking at the catching market as the offseason begins. They're interested in free agent Wilson Contreras, whom Scott Harris knows from his tenure in Chicago would be a reunite. Reuniting with Javi Baez, mm-hmm. uh, I guess the Tigers would become my new favorite team in the AL for a little bit. Um, but he also he sent out a tweet this morning, Morosi, saying the Blue Jays are expected to trade for a catcher this offseason or trade a catcher this offseason, according to multiple rival execs mm-hmm. uh, he's, that he's spoken with at the GM meetings. The Jays have an abundance of talent at the position, Danny Jansen, Alejandro Kirk, and Gabriel Moreno. So that poses – the idea of maybe the Cubs go that route in terms of filling that hole for of losing Contreras. Again, we've talked about it. It ends about how I feel about Contreras coming back. You guys have as well. Uh, it just feels like it's something that's definitely going to happen at this point um, after the Cubs extend the qualifying offer. Um, what, what a, how are we feeling about this? Anybody that is not the St. Louis Cardinals, <laughs> go ahead and sign Wilson Contreras. I, I've resigned myself to what the Cubs are doing. We've spent, I mean, since the trade deadline, talking about the logic and mm. or lack thereof, whichever you end up feeling. But the connection of the Cardinals, the constant tweets about how they need a catcher with, uh, you know, Yachty retiring, and uh, anybody in the league except the Cardinals. <laughs> that wants to sign Wilson Contreras, go for it. I wish him well. Enjoy your money. You've earned it. Just please don't get it from St. Louis. That's it. I, I don't care. What, I, if, you, what uh, if you went to Milwaukee out of nowhere? Well, them too. You know, <laughs> come on. Uh, well, so They hate get, him up there. I don't think he's going to Milwaukee. No, he's not. They literally hate him. They would and be like, hating their own player. I don't like, – yeah. <laughs> Milwaukee, I'm not – like they have a we- very weird roster situation, yeah. and I think that Absolutely. team is going to end up getting worse. They yeah. can't afford. Uh, they probably and and afford so, Wilson. but yeah. even if he went there, I'm less worried about. Like the the Cardinals are in a better position. Absolutely. And if he goes there, the threat of them winning with him is, is very high. It yeah. doesn't feel as high with Milwaukee. Milwaukee so that's sure. my. Well, so this that's goes, the number one. Yeah. yeah. So with all this Wilson Contreras stuff, um, just as far as background goes, we know that. The Cubs are extending the qualifying offer. What is it like nineteen point something million? Is is what the contract offer is supposed to be, or the qualifying offer is supposed to be? Um, so that would be. It's like it's between nineteen and twenty. I don't remember the exact number. Um, one year contract. Cubs are expect or Cubs are going to offer it to him. Um, and it, it all really depends. Like if Wilson feels out his market, and then decides, like, because I think I want to say it's within within 10 days or within five days or something like that, that uh, they have to accept or reject the qualifying offer. Mm-hmm. So you would have to get a pretty good feel of it pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's definitely a, a shot that he feels out his market right off the bat. It's not what he wants it to be. He decides to take that qualifying offer, maybe bet on himself for one more year or, you know, whatever it is, maybe even see about getting, I don't know. I don't know what it would, what it would take for him to accept it, but there's definitely a scenario in that sense. So, as far as, again, Bears fan man's question goes, what the Cubs plans at catcher, it still kind of comes down to whatever Wilson Contreras does. Right. Because mm-hmm. if they, you know, if he accepts a qualifying offer and, that, and then comes back next year, the Cubs aren't going to go out and get a fourth catcher. <laughs> like, right. They're going to have him, Jan Gomes, and P.J. Higgins again, and then they may just do the same setup for one more year. This, um, the the I. The entire thing with Contreras and how, like his market, it's gonna be like it's gonna be one of the more fascinating things that we watch this off season at this point because, like, you know, there's some people that think that he's gonna get some somewhere between, you know, the the Yasmani Grandal and Real Muto contract somewhere around that I think, and then, you know, I think that he'd be better off taking a shorter term deal like a like a two or three year deal, um, or Take that qualifying offer. He's gonna make like nineteen million next year, uh, so I, it's it's gonna be very interesting to watch play out. And like I just, 
I, I couldn't tell you. Like, a lot – like, everyone's just been checking the box that he's going to go to the Cardinals, and, like, I just don't believe it. I just do not think that's a Cardinals move. Is, is the, that is the least likely destination, even though ever to, – to me at least. Compared to what we've – what I have seen that organization do over the years, I just do not see it happening. So, to see that the Tigers are interested in him – um, I mean, that doesn't makes surprise sense. me. With Scott yeah. Harris as the new as a GM, I think mm-hmm. the GM is his official title. Scott Harris, I can't remember, but if he's it's on him top. Or like a yeah. president yeah. or yeah. whatever, whichever, whichever is the yeah, the top. And, and they got it. And the Tigers, they need to do something because they spent a lot of money last offseason and then still were really bad. Yeah, were really, really bad. Um, Going with the, uh, we're just gonna build like the aging ex Cubs is yeah. an interesting strategy. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. for guys were really hurt last year too. Though. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. For I mean, um, for the Cubs, I think they're. Their preferred route is what we've talked about, where I think they would like to be kind of where the Astros just were, yeah. where it's about the pitching staff more than mm-hmm. anything, right? You watch those World Series games, and, like, I think Maldonado had an RBI or two, right, like with a bleeding ground ball through the infield. What's happening but over there? I think I just saw I think Karm. we're doing a TikTok. Karm was just twerking over there. Yeah. So, um, Karm, were you twerking TikTok's over there? filmed. He can't hear me. He's not okay, listening. sorry, go ahead. I, I got distracted. I know that, trust me, a TikTok being filmed is much more interesting than <laughs> I got than distracted. Me. But, <laughs> like, you saw it with the Astros. Like, they have Maldonado back there. They traded for Christian Vasquez, but, like, they want guys that control the pitching yep. staff. That is the number one priority. If they literally don't get a hit all year, they don't care, right? That's what Jordan Alvarez is for. He's yeah. the one that hits the Jeremy bombs. Payne, like, don't worry yeah. about Martin Maldonado. And so I think that's the preference. I think they'd like to pair someone with Jan Gomes, who can kind of make that happen. Everybody loved Jan Gomes, but you're right, Cody. Like, if Wilson accepts the QO, which, uh, you know, maybe that's possible. I think it's unlikely, but uh, you never, like, this stuff plays out in weird ways. Like To, to wrap this, this one up, I would absolutely love if Alejandro Kirk somehow became a Cub because <laughs> that guy is a vibe. Sure. He is everything that, like, I wish I could have been. He is like a refrigerator <laughs> that runs. Uh, you guys, did you? Did you he, have... he is he is a king for the short kings and oh, yeah. for the and for right the here. units out there. All right, I would absolutely love for Alejandro Kirk oh, to yeah. become a cup. Short but kings, I think I think the Jays are probably going to keep him because yeah. he was really good for them this year. It was but, great. You you know, see, I don't I don't know a ton about Danny Jansen or the other guy, but uh, Danny Jansen was a good hitter, but in a lot fewer plate appearances than okay. Kirk. Played. I I'm think sure Kirk is the one that they're going to keep, but like, I would I would think yeah. so. He was really good. And did you guys I, see that? Remember that tweet maybe a month or so ago? Isn't it was in the Blue Jays are still in the postseason, and some guy is like it was a picture of Alejandro Kirk, and like we sh- pretty much guys saying like we shouldn't be um, promoting Alejandro Kirk. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah, guy yeah. ended up having to yeah. delete his Twitter account he because got he got ratio. Oh my yeah. god, it was cooked. so bad. But I'm like, he got cooked. He kind of deserved he that cooked. one. Like, what the hell? Rest in peace to that guy. <laughs> what was that? RIP in peace. You know, Alejandro Kirk, though, I bet he loves meat sticks. I bet he does. You, I, he has to. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would think so. Everyone does, though. Right. Everyone loves meat sticks. You know what I mean? I do have a... That's a good segue. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I was trying to set no, you up. No, I, I got it. Yeah, I, okay. But I, 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 I got it, and not to break the fourth wall, but I'm going to, to compliment you on your Luke-like ability to naturally transition us uh but yes metrics nation baby (laughs) since uh what was that june 17th may May 17th may 17th 17th. i I don't want to cut you off a month uh but yes we do want to talk to you about green ridge farms it is a chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all natural option makers of all natural deli meat sausages and the aforementioned famous meat sticks that are perfect for tailgating happy hour, and school lunches. These all-natural meat sticks are hardwood smoked for eight hours. 16 grams of protein per stick make a perfect post-workout snack. The sticks come in chicken, black forest beef, and flavors like jalapeno cheddar and spicy chili. If you have not been to one of the CHGO Bears tailgates, they have Green Ridge Farms at the tailgates. We've got another one coming up on Sunday. Yes. I'm going to be making my tailgate debut. Ooh. Chicago, you know, pre-gaming for the Bears, have some drinks, some Green Ridge Farms meats. What beats it? It was pretty awesome. It It was pretty awesome last Sunday. You can always find them in the refrigerated section at Costco, Sam's Club, or in your local Chicagoland grocery store. Right now, when you order any three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com and include a pack of meat sticks in your cart, those meat sticks will be free. Use code CHGO at checkout green ridge farm 
Simply Natural Meat. Don't forget that code CHGO at tailgate. Check out. Sorry, I read, the, I read the tailgate <laughs> thing on the screen. I'm like uh, Anchorman. If you put it on the screen, I will read it. Right. And then yeah. what, when, when you're at the tailgate, you can, you know, hang out, and then you can pull up game time. Yeah, yeah. So tailgate, November 13th, starts at 830. That's this Sunday. Um, Bears host the Lions. Same place. Uh, was it Roosevelt and Madison? Roosevelt, no, Michigan. Roosevelt, Michigan. There you go. Yeah, Madison. That doesn't make any sense. Roosevelt, <laughs> Michigan. Um, not too not too far a walk from uh, from Soldier Field. So, if you're interested in going to the game after the tailgate, just download Game Time. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. Ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could? Fifty yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert. It's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. You won't find a better deal this season on Bears games, Bulls games. Hell, you go to Sloan Park uh, for spring training in March. You need one of those. You won't find a better deal this season. Uh, it's created by fans, for the fans. It guarantees the lowest price. And if you love CHGO, then you'll love game time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the, through the link in the description. That's either on YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast, go to the episode um, the link is in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. To uh, I do want to answer uh, Koopa Scoop in the chat. Are they at Jewel Osco? Yes, Green Ridge Farm is at are certain Jewel Osco the locations. Jewels, yes. They the are Jewels. at the Jewels. Oh, oh yes, yeah. they are at the Jewels. Meats, Mike Dub says it best: meat sticks for all. Oh, Garrett Johnson too. All he also meat says: stick. eat a Green Ridge Farm meat stick while placing a bet on DraftKings. Oh. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. I was doing that at the tailgate on Sunday. That's what he does. does. He wakes up in the morning, unwraps his Green Ridge Farm meat stick, and <laughs> opens his favorite bread. In bed. His favorite, I'm eating uh, a meat app. stick in bed while I'm placing a, a wager on something. <laughs> this morning, I was placing a wager on Ball State to cover 11 tonight. Let's get some action tonight, baby. I'm excited. Um, anyway, uh, shout out to everyone in the chat. Hit that like button, uh, especially for this next one, which we kind of hinted we're going to talk about. Um so we were at the end of yesterday's show. We were like, "Oh, we're going to talk about Otani and the trade possibilities," because there was a story out of the, the Athletic that had some like ideas for certain teams, and the, there there was one listed for the Cubs. But then I think like not even three hours, maybe it was like an hour or two later, uh, the GM for the Angels was just publicly came out and said, "We're not trading Otani," which we'll see. I, I still don't like my, you know, put put the old conspiracy hat on and, you know, maybe the little tinfoil hat at the same time. I don't know if I believe it, but he said that they're not going to trade for Otani. But uh, I think it was Heyman who tweeted it. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Said that Pablo Lopez is popular in trade talk right now. So obviously we we're talking about a pitcher earlier. Uh, Pablo Lopez is, uh, you know, the, the Marlins need bats. And that's why. Um, Pablo Lopez is out there as, as a trade target. How do we feel about Pablo Lopez? Should he be a Cub? I'm into it. I mean, I think he kind of fits at least some of what they're looking for. He's 26 mm -hmm. years old. They'd have him till at least 2025 before he's a free agent. Um, you know, set a career high in innings last year with the Marlins at 180 even. Uh, but he's been quite good for a few years now, going back to, you know, the shortened season in 2020, a 3.6 ERA, 3.07 the year following, 3.75 last year uh, with pretty close FIPS. So, you know, you're not feeling like he's getting lucky or, you know, bailed out by the defense or anything like that. So, uh, you know, he's, I don't think he's going to be that ace that potentially mm -hmm. they're looking for. Um, but at 26, he gives you a long-term option, some stability. Um, you know, made 32 starts last year, 20 the year before. I would, to me, you know, it would depend on the price, right? Which I think is going to be the thing with any of this, but, uh, you know, he, he fits a lot of what you're looking for outside of being a clear, like number one ACE type pitcher. Yeah. And he's arbitration eligible for the next two seasons. I think this season, uh, I was looking at Spotrack. Um, it has his estimated uh, salary six million two hundred and eighty five thousand nine hundred eighty seven dollars, which is not bad for. If it, I think he's a guy that could be at worst like your number three 
starter. Um, so if you throw him in a, in a three with right now, Stroman and Justin Steele, that's good. Obviously, the Cubs are, you know, it's probably still expected to chase after one of those higher end starting pitchers, Carlos Rodon, maybe, uh, what have you. I, I still think DeGrom is a long shot, but I'm going <laughs> to let you keep dreaming about it. Don't let um, me talk myself into it. <laughs> um, but Pablo Lopez, he fits in too. I mean, uh, you know, Jed Hoyer talks about going out and get quality innings. Um, you know, guys that you know can go out there and give you innings every game. I mean, Pablo Lopez started 32 games this this past season. Um, I forgot what the innings are. 180 innings, um, which you know, old days wouldn't be that wouldn't sound like that much, but that was actually a pretty good amount of innings <laughs> this mm-hmm. season, especially coming off the short spring training. Um, I like Pablo Lopez. I I think he is a good pitcher. I think he fits in well with what the Cubs are trying to build, uh, especially on that pitching staff. Um, Maybe you'd want a little bit more. He, he does kind of strike me as another like soft contact kind of guy. So maybe yeah. you want a little more a sitting little, like lowish, mid, you know, ninety three ish. I think so with like his the, pitches. The so Cubs he's do not, have a lot of those guys. Um, so any other pitchers they go get, you want them to have the velocity that right. guys like Kyle Hendricks doesn't have, Marcus Stroman doesn't have. Um, you don't want to build up too many of those guys. Um, but I, Kevin, I don't know if you got that tweet pulled up. Uh, Greg Zumach. Greg Zumak um, tweeted this out earlier. He was on our Look, show last week. Regarding Pablo Lopez. Um, I had sent it in Slack. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's fine. Um, yeah, I'll read it out. It. So this was a sort of trade proposal that uh, Greg put out there. Uh, so he said, I've asked someone that is pretty clued in and follows the Miami Marlins about Pablo Lopez's trade value, and we settled on Pablo Lopez for Keegan Thompson, Christopher Morrell, and Johendrick Penango. What do you think about that? Well, uh, listen, I you know, Keegan Thompson and Christopher Morell, I think that their value is as high as it's ever going to be right now. And you're getting a 26-year-old starter, proven starter. Um, that said, though, like, after everything you guys just said, and I don't really know a ton about the guy. We're using Delmetric's thoughts here right now. Um I feel like just signing Senga sounds like the better idea, because you're you're not you haven't convinced me that he can be a top number one top of the rotation guy, and if you sign Senga, then you then you then you know some people in the chat are saying wait for Otani or you know someone else I I don't know like I don't want to give up Keegan Thompson and Christopher Morrell for a guy who's going to be at best your number two, that's the way that you've guys have kind of talked me or not talked me into it but just explain it to me because I'm I'm just being honest with you I don't know a ton about Pablo Lopez I remember the Marlins coming to Wrigley I'm pretty sure he pitched one of those games mm. and I'm pretty sure he had a good outing but is he a number one is he a number one I don't no, probably not but you also think, think that so. Kodai Sang is not projected to be number one I think he's like a mid rotation. Yeah, but only I'm saying, money but he's also him. he's coming over from Japan. Like he has no proven track record sure. in the majors, and That's we know fair. we fair. know how tough it can be. We know that guys that come over can you know never really have much success in the okay. major leagues. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that I, he won't. I'm just saying that you know that's also a risk as well. Mm-hmm. Versus trading, you know, Keegan Thompson is is tough to give. I think out of the three is the toughest one to give up because I think he does still have star potential. Worse about Morel. I think in reading it, I feel worse about giving up Morel. I think I think Keegan does have more starter potential, but the way the game is going, his uh, he could be elite at the whole multi inning reliever thing. He could be the best multi inning reliever in baseball because he was dominant in that role this year, and he's still growing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think for me, that's the toughest one to give up. But Pablo Lopez strikes me as a guy that. I I I'm, I I would have to look more in the numbers to know really whether that is what like whether the Cubs win or lose that trade feels like feels like it, it's pretty even to me. Um, but you would have to imagine Morell and uh, Jazz Chisholm yeah. on the team. The, <laughs> the same vibes team are good. The they would be, be the most the vibey thing, team in baseball. The thing man. about Lopez <laughs> that I think you'd have to bake in here, right, is that he's only 26 he'll be 27 in March so next year will be a full season at age 27 Mm -hmm. and maybe this gives you pause I don't know but last year is the first year he gets over 30 starts first year he gets over you know into 180 innings 
But at the same time, though, does that kind of increase your curiosity of, okay, maybe he's still growing as a pitcher. Fair. And so I don't know that he has the stuff to be an ace or a number one, but you are potentially acquiring a 27-year-old who is, uh, you know, has the potential to blossom still, if you will. Like, I don't think we're looking at a final product, and we also are big believers in the Tommy Hadovy, Craig Breslow infrastructure there. Yeah. Maybe they've got stuff up their sleeve for Pablo Lopez that the Marlins haven't tapped into he, yet. He right? is also a year younger than Keegan. Right. It's like, like almost a full year younger than my, Keegan. And my he's feeling, four years into his big league career. I'm with you on Keegan. And I think especially when you watch how these playoffs play out, like you can envision a situation where Keegan Thompson is playing a oh huge God. role what, um, in what, a playoff run. Was it uh, Luis Garcia, what he did? It was against the, against the Yankees, I think, right? He had, like— That sounds right. When he yeah. came in, like, it was, a, it was an extra inning game, and he came in and yeah. pitched, like, four— The, the Astros and, have guys that are throwing gas, but you see how they use that pitching staff where they were leaning a ton on their bullpen yes. and guys to throw multiple innings, kind of condensing that pitching staff. I can see Keegan doing that. I guess my feel would be if the Cubs move him, they— I would be comfortable with it because they're comfortable with it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, they've developed this guy. They see it. They know what they have asked of him and seen of him. If they felt comfortable moving on, not saying, like, they know something or, you know, have a lower opinion of him, but, like, they've seen it. So, like, if they're moving mm -hmm. on, I would be like, okay, I mean, then they mm -hmm. feel like the value is somewhere else, I guess. Yeah. I In reading the proposal from Greg, I I have a tough time giving up morell like i don't even know what i think morell's ceiling a, is but i i right. i'm i'm like there's, there's, it's interesting about morell because a lot of people just have kind of said that he's a utility player at best you know that's what he'll probably be his entire career is just a utility guy and i i guess when people say utility guy you're thinking of a guy who's just coming off the bench he's not playing every single day but man the guy can play all over the field yeah. and the energy that he brings is something that you don't just find in any player. Yeah. And he could do a little bit of everything with the bat. Yeah. Like obviously has the power, but you know, you, you, I, I personally would like to see what he does in year two. I, and if things go awfully wrong, then I'll sit here and say that I was wrong. We should have traded him. But like you got a 23 year old guy who can play all over the field and has shown that can have power, can hit, uh, you know, for contact. And also, like, during some of those adjustment periods, he showed that he could cut down on the strikeouts. Now, at the end of the year, I know that he struggled with that, and it was kind of alarming, and it does kind of scare me a little bit. That's the one thing about Morel that definitely does scare me. But he proved in the minors that he could cut down on the strikeouts. Right. I'm willing to see in year two if he can do that, especially with this team not mm. necessarily going all in to win the World Series next year. We're just hoping that we make the playoffs, right? So I don't think that his value – could be completely diminished in year two. I just, I just don't believe that that's going to happen. Right. So, like, again, to get a to get a twenty six, twenty seven year old starting pitcher, you got to give up something. So, to me, right. it, I don't even think that you're giving up too much or too, or you're not giving up enough or whatever. I, it's, it's more of how I feel about Morell and Keegan Thompson. I don't mind giving up the prospect. I'm just thinking at, like I said before, in a way, like, you know. If 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 Lopez is is more likely to be in the middle of the rotation type guy, then just sign Senga. That way you don't have to give up anything. But if the Cubs believe that they can help him ascend to being a top of the rotation starter with the pitch lab, then okay, let's let's ride. Let's find I out. I just like I feel like if I, if you had the choice between the two, Pablo Lopez and Co and Kodai Senga, and just throwing away trades and all that stuff because that obviously makes a difference. But if you had the choice between the two. Pablo Lopez seems like the much safer bet. If it, yeah. Say both are free agents. Pablo Lopez seems like much safer of a bet than Senga, you but then so? you have to add in the trades and, and what you're giving up versus just money. I I, so I, I get your I get your I, People in Japan that. are saying that he, Senga hit 101 this the year. The potential, <laughs> I think, is higher for Senga if he adjusts well, yeah. and it translates, right? We uh, saw that with his numbers. No, I'm, I'm with you. The yeah, safer, safer bet, bet. though. Yeah. To, to the chat, like as they're debating... Morell and Keegan and all this stuff. The the one thing like we're hammering, we're spending so much time on Sanga and Pablo Lopez and even if it's DeGrom or Verlander starters, right? The one thing I do want to highlight 
is the value of a guy. And again, Pablo Lopez only did it once, but his career has been trending to that point. Mm -hmm. The value of a guy that can throw 180 innings and make over 30 starts in this league at this point in time, I think some people are underestimating a little bit. I love Keegan Thompson. I just said I feel uneasy about moving Morrell. <laughs> Last year, the Cubs had zero guys make 30 starts, right? They had zero guys throw over, I'm looking at it now, I think 150 I think innings. Stroman had like 26 right? starts. 25. Most. 25, yeah. Like that value is huge. That is a guy who goes out every fifth day, picks up the ball, and last year Lopez was doing it at a 3.7 ERA clip, right? The Cubs had nobody that did that. So when we're debating the value and how much we love these guys, you got to remember, like, organizationally, if you, like, that is something the Cubs lack, is a true every day. You want it to be Stroman, but he dealt with some injuries and, you know, COVID. So that's out of his control. I think he is one of those yeah. guys on a normal basis. But with where Kyle Hendricks is in his career, you have so many of these young guys who even if you put Hayden Wisniewski in that rotation, right, is he going to make 30-plus starts? Is he going to be able to go out there every yeah. fifth day? Do you feel comfortable with that? You saw, like, Steele and Thompson deal with some injuries and kind of needing to be, like, slowed down a little bit. The value of a starter like that is, I think, a good bit higher than uh, people may give – credit, credit for. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the point. Like that's, that's deals because, might make you uncomfortable. Yeah. It's you're you're that's what you're paying for. You're paying yeah. for stability and insurance that this is one slot in this rotation that just goes out there every fifth yeah, day. We don't need that depth. Because for that, that was so much more commonplace a long time ago. Yeah. Maybe not even that long ago. And now like not you know the pitchers are getting hurt more and more. There's more uh focus on like resting and load management kind of thing. So not everyone's making the, that 30 to 32 starts every season that felt so commonplace not that long ago. So and you don't need it, but it's it's nice to have. Yeah, and like, there's a reason that I think Jed is going to pursue it. It doesn't have to be Pablo Lopez, but Someone. somebody that just you tuck, can just yeah. plug in there and be sure of. Like There's a well, lot of innings. value that's, in that. That's what Jed wants, quality innings, and, right. and I think Pablo Lopez would provide that very easily. With that said, I'm going to give you my conspiracy theory about why Otani's still getting traded after I tell you about how you can get a Otani gear at FOCO. Sh Chicago, you've, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite teams, so get fitted out in the best sports gear around FOCO. Got you covered from Soldier Field to the living room, north or south side, with hoodies, slippers, Signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between get decked out like Damar with apparel from the leader in sports merch and collectibles. Foco, looking for the perfect gift for your football fan in your life. Foco's got you covered with hoodies to fight that Lake Michigan breeze. Check out Foco.com or click the link in our YouTube description or in the podcast info below. For all non-presale items, use promo code CHGO for 10% off. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the tailgate a little bit earlier. When you come to the tailgate, we got um, bag sets, or some people call them cornhole. Greg Braggs, I was doing CHGO Bears after dark last night. He called them bing bag boards. I was like, what are you talking about, brother? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Um, anyway, we got really cool bag sets. And they're bing from, bag boards, I love that. Yeah, we got really Sorry. cool bag sets, and they're from Chi-Town Cornhole. Uh, Chi-Town Custom Cornhole, the number one cornhole provider for Chicagoland and Illinois since 2007. Our signature box style design can be digitally printed, covered in vinyl, and painted. Our cornhole boards come with built-in drink holders recessed in on the back LED lights that light up the hole in exterior, handles for easy carrying and handcrafted scorekeepers. Veteran-owned and operated, we ship anywhere and offer local pickups Specializing in corporate designs for your company's next marketing or social event, weddings, wedding gifts, and gifts for all occasions, and especially for tailgaters and backyard barbecues. We definitely take advantage of that. Go check out their website, ChiTownCornhole.com, and make sure you follow them on Instagram at Chi-Town Custom Cornhole Boards. I think I've said it before, their account got hacked or something like that. So they're trying to rebuild it back up. Go follow them. Uh, they, they, they do a great job of designing them because they yeah. look sick. No, you, we, the, the boards are awesome. And we, yeah. you know, we had them out at the tailgate. Um, people, everyone's playing on them, but they just look so cool. 
and yeah. we have them up. We have them up here somewhere. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe we'll bring maybe we'll put them back there next show so you can see them. Absolutely. Next time we talk we about ha- them. we have like five minutes left. So I'm just gonna give you my theory on Otani really quick. Listen, it is the beginning is first week of the off season. There is just no way. There's no way that 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 front office, considering the ownership issue that got going on there, because it looks like they're gonna sell. There's no way that they don't they don't take a call for him at all. There's just absolutely no way in my mind that they say no because he's got one year left, and if they do not like you, like they are not gonna get the value of of what they could get now at the deadline. I, I just no. I just refuse to believe that that is a thing. There is no way that they are not taking calls. I, I refuse to believe it. Um, if I'm wrong, if we get to the offseason, he's still on the Angels, fine. I was wrong. But I, I just, there's no, I, I refuse to believe it. I, yeah. Shohei Otani is, he, if, 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 they're, if they're not going to trade him, then they better be extending him within the next month or two. Because if they don't, that will be one of the more biggest mistakes that franchise has ever made. And they've already made plenty of mistakes because they got him and Mike Trout and they can't make the playoffs. This, like, they, if they're not going to trade him, they better sign him immediately because there's just no way that they will get the value of yeah. what he really is at the deadline next season than right now. Yeah. I just well, still give, can't believe we're even talking about this. Yeah. I can't believe that they can't figure out how to win with them. Yeah. And, like, not only just his value as a two-way player, but, like, he is one of the legitimate— I mean, how many are there even in baseball? He is a star. He is a sports star. Yeah. Right. If you ask random people that casually watch baseball, could they pick Mike Trout out of a lineup? I no. kind of doubt it. Right. Even people that don't follow baseball, you know who Shohei Otani is. You know about this guy who does it all. Right. Mm-hmm. The fact that they're like even dis- that the they have to come out and say no, we're not going to just trade him. It's it's crazy. It's, he, yeah. He's a percentage of the net worth of that franchise. Like a, a, an, an actual yeah. percentage. Yeah. Point. Like a hundred percent. Like that. That's crazy to me that you're right. You can't find a way to get that done. Come on, it's it's. He's, the, he's like the biggest. Honestly, he's like the maybe the biggest superstar in baseball right now. And to think that like how big he is in Japan, all those eyes going to whatever team he's on, that has to be that has to be a big part of whatever whatever income they're coming. But Cody, I want you to put uh, uh like a like kind of like a over under before or after. Give me a date, set it, and then tell me are you going before or after for the for a Sohei Otani trade this off season. I will say that he gets traded that he gets traded in 2023 before the season. I don't think it happens in the next 2 months. That's such a long it's a long window to have given yourself it's like he'll he'll be traded by opening day. If, basically what you're okay. saying. Okay. <laughs> he'll be he'll be traded in January sometime. Okay. I just want Cody yeah, on back. record <laughs> that if they trade if the if Jed Hoyer trades for Shohei Otani, Cody will ride the scooter nude. Around oh, wow. Wrigley Field. No one wants to see that, brother. <laughs> no one wants to see that. We, gotta, we have to offer up something crazy to the even, baseball gods. Yeah. We have to We have to put some karma out there. You know? You'll do that slingshot. That no, slingshot uh, I'd rather ride around Wrigley naked than do that slingshot. <laughs> I don't even think my own significant other wants to see me do that on the scooter. Ryan and I will bail you out of the <laughs> Addison Street Police Station. It's fine. Uh, A.K.A. Luke will bail you out. But, yeah. <laughs> uh Okay, we have a few minutes. So, two things: um, the Cubs they release like coaching, yeah, their coaching staff for next season officially. Uh, obviously, Dustin Kelly is on there, but the thing that stuck out to me was that Willie Harris is still going to be a third base coach. Yes. Um, all the updates it's on the Cubs Twitter account or social media wherever I you can also go check it out. Those out. Yeah, Ryan tweeted them out. You can go see it. Um, uh, again, I I, ju- I just think it's pretty interesting that Willie Harris isn't getting any interest from teams around the league. So, but I, I'm happy to have his vibes back at third base. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Dustin I Kelly officially hitting coach. Uh, what also stuck out to me is now the Cubs have like multiple assistant hitting coaches because Johnny Washington had been there uh, last season. Uh, but now Juan Cabreja uh, has been promoted. He's been there a long time. Um, and he got promoted to uh, hitting co- assistant hitting coach. And uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Mota, He's a major league coach now. He got promoted. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a couple uh, fun promotions to see from guys that have been there for a long time. Um, yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised that Willie Harris isn't 
is still there. Like, I'm not surprised because it felt kind of White Sox or bust to me as mm-hmm. far as if he was going to be Fair. a manager. Um, and once that I went just away, thought that I was like, the likability of him around the league is was something that the, yeah. that teams would want because yeah. I've said it before. I feel like the manager is okay. Know how to manage a bullpen and bring vibes. Yeah, I, and, I, and bring like a rah rah like get my players to play for me mentality. Yeah. And I think he does that. You'd I'm, have to teach the new third if they had to get yeah. a new third base coach. You'd have to teach him all of those you know, home run celebrations. Yeah, yeah. If Patrick Wisdom is still on the team, you know, you he's have to jump. find a guy who's going to be able to jump that high yeah. in the air. There's a lot of qualifications. You know, vibes yeah. are important. As Luke Stuckmeyer would say, and I've heard him say many times, it's all about the vibes. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm wondering if maybe teams want to see Willie Harris maybe uh, in a bench coach role at some point, see right. how he does in there before he kind of moves up. I know he has managed in the minor leagues before. Mm-hmm. Um, the third base coach is kind of as high as he's gotten in the, in the major leagues. So maybe there's like a bench coach role in the future. I know he said that he would even like to take that next step. I, you know, when I asked him about it um, and see what he could do there, he said he's learned a lot from Andy Green in that sense. Um, so maybe that's just the next step that he has to take before he kind of gets truly uh, true interest in, in a manager as a manager. When candidate. I think, uh, you know, I know like, he has before, but I don't know. It's, it's always hard to know like how much exactly these guys are doing or like what the value is. But like, I'm glad that the Cubs have been able to keep Andy Green speaking of him for yeah. this long. You know, he had the managerial experience that didn't go that well in, in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everybody seems to speak very highly of him and like the experience he's bringing. And like, you know, anytime these manager they usually just cycle through a lot of the same managers and he mm-hmm. hasn't gotten that call. Um, and so I'm glad the Cubs have been able to keep someone with that experience. And that seems to have the reputation that yeah, he does well, in this group. And it's that it's like with Tommy Hadovy too. Mm-hmm. Um, he Continuity was, is, he was is pitching good. coach when Joe yeah. Madden was still here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. David Ross comes and he, he stays on. And now you are seeing that continuity pay dividends, I think because you're looking at what the pitching infrastructure is yeah. doing. Um, you hope that, you hope the hitting infrastructure is starting to catch up to that, but the pitching infrastructure is 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 working, and you can see that based on Tommy Hadovy being here for a while. Um, Daniel Moskis obviously bringing what he brings, but then, you know, all Craig Breslow and everything going up and down. Oh God, uh, Craig Breslow <laughs> up and down. Just that whole system is doing is starting to work wonders, and you're seeing it as a, as those prospects move up through the system. Yeah. Um, shout out to David Snyder, Cody naked, no way. Let him wear his underwear at least. I. I'm not. I'm not at. If we want Otani, we got to make. We <laughs> yeah. got to put promises out there. Got to risk you know? it to get the biscuit. We'll find out something if we. If well, give me a week. I'll Jumping in the ice cold lake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you have to put things out into the universe that we're yeah. willing to contribute. We can't offer up yeah. any any money yeah. or trade right. prospects. We have to. As a group, we have to do something. And I volunteered it Cody. Biscuit, it seemed Cody. like the best. Seemed like the best. Uh, would, Maybe so. draped in a W flag. Yeah, like. <laughs> the W flag they used. The, Michael that says I have sleeping. to wear a Molina jersey. Hell oh. no, for Otani. <laughs> no. Yeah. I wouldn't even make him do that. <laughs> you wouldn't do that for Otani? Come on. No, Cody. man. Oh, I wouldn't even make him I have him a buddy that. who's oh, There's got to be something. I mean, it, it would live on Shohei Otani. It would live on the like, internet. And I no, I, I can't. No. I'm sorry. If that's okay. I thought it was like he wear actually. Wear let me out think Yadier about Molina it. Molina as you're scootering around Wrigley. If all you have to do is wear a Yadier Molina jersey on the show you're, for you're an being, hour. You are being kind of selfish. <laughs> let me think about. it. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Uh, last thing, selfish. absolute last thing. The Yankees are expected to offer the qualifying offer to Rizzo, which is supposed to be 19.65 million. Um, I think because the qualifying offer is attached now, I think that kind of takes the Cubs out of it. So if anyone was Almost hoping assuredly. for it. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, I was one of those people. Me too. Um, it is what it is. So it, uh, I just don't think Jed is going to trade for a, or not sign a guy that they have to give a draft pick back that you already traded. It's, doesn't sound like something that he would do. It's, it, it also seems like that leads more to, I don't know what the Yankees plans are. They have bigger fish to fry with like yeah. Aaron Judge, but like that's going to tamper his market. So it kind of seems like they probably figure yeah. something out that's a longer term there, situation. There may there. also be because you're 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 getting the stuff. If, if Wilson Contreras leaves, you're getting the the draft pick through the qualifying offer that way. Um, but guys like I want to say Trey Turner is subject to the qualifying. There's a couple of shortstops that they may be going after that probably are going to be subject to the qualifying offer. I don't think Correa is. Um, Correa is not. Uh, he's not. Uh, I think I want to say like Bogarts and Turner are. I could be wrong about that. I know at least one of them is. Bogarts um, is. Bogarts is. So 
you may be just kind of trading draft picks through that with the Wilson and right. Bogarts. Now you add Rizzo in there. That's another loss of a qual- of a draft pick um, through a qualifying offer. So I, n- I never really saw it regardless, but. I'm putting it to bed. This, I, this I is, was hurt again. You're welcome. This is the nail in Cody's I'll, I'll stop tweeting about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm done. No more I'm no done. more hope. Our hope is gone when it comes to Anthony. Well, and like, you know, Mervis hits a home run every five minutes. And some he, he goes to a different league and just hits home runs every five minutes. I think yeah. he's going to be done soon for the offseason. <laughs> but he'll find a way to keep hitting home right. runs. So. Uh, okay. This was fun. If you think that I took Luke's job, let us know in the chat. Or in the comments after the live chat is gone, if you're or if tweet you're, at us, yeah, or tweet at us. You know, I would love to know. You can start calling me Cody Stuckmeyer. That's totally fine. I will react to it. Let's well, um, Luke Stuckmendo. Luke Del Mendo, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow with uh, you know more updates. I'm sure there'll be more rumors. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey and Brendan will be back, will be uh, Friday, um, so you'll get to hear him again. So you got to hear him twice this week. Congratulations. Um, and or Luke sorry, will, Luke will hopefully be back tomorrow. Or it's just gonna be me and you. You know. Oh, we got no. We do we, that, do no, we have no, a guest no, tomorrow. We do have a guest tomorrow. Um, Eugene McIntosh from the Bigs Media will be in okay. studio with us. Vibes. Um, some people may remember uh, that video that went a little viral on Cubs Twitter of uh, David Ross kind of saying uh, there's a loyalty factor and why he was playing Jason Hayward earlier this summer. Oh I'm yeah, sure you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Sure. That was Eugene's video. So okay. Bigs Media. I have, I have, I have a and little stuff to go. Things. So okay, that will be tomorrow. Make tomorrow, sure you tune in. One twenty. Thanks for dropping in to check out the CHGO Cups podcast. Fly the W. See you tomorrow.